Plant Water Relation Water is essential for all physiological activities of the plant and plays a very important role in all living organisms. Water is a main component of plant cells. Many plant functions depend upon the properties of water. Water constitutes 70% by weight in most forms of life. Watermelon has 92% of water. Most herbaceous plants have 10 to 15% of its fresh weight as dry weight. Carrot root is about 85% water by weight. And young leaves of lettuce contain 90% of water. Distribution of water within a plant varies. Woody parts have relatively very little water, while other parts mostly contain water. A seed may appear dry, but still has water otherwise. It would not be alive. The physical and chemical properties of water make it suitable for a variety of purposes in plants. 1. It is a medium in which diffusion of solutes takes place in plant cells. 2. It is a solvent in which mineral nutrients enter into a plant from soil solution and transported throughout the plant in an aqueous medium. 3. It is a medium in which many biochemical reactions occur. 4. Water imports turgidity to plant cells. 5. It provides mechanical support and rigidity to the plant cells. 6. Several movements of plant parts, such as folding of leaflets in sensitive plants, opening and closing of flowers, and stomata movements of leaves are due to water. 7. Growth of plants due to elongation depends on water. 8. It is a source of O2 evolved in photosynthesis. 9. Water regulates heat in plant body. 10. Water is a medium for fertilization. It helps in dissemination of spores, fruits and seeds. Terrestrial plants take up huge amount of water daily, but most of it is lost to the air through evaporation from the leaves, that is, transpiration. A mature corn plant absorbs almost 3 litres of water in a day, while a mustard plant absorbs water equally to its own weight in about 5 hours. Because of this high demand for water, it is not surprising that water is often the limiting factor for plant growth and productivity in both agricultural and natural environments. Water Potential Water potential is defined as the difference between the free energy of water molecules in pure water and the free energy of water molecules in a solution. It is represented by Psi W. It is a concept fundamental to understanding water movement. Solute potential Psi S and pressure potential Psi P are the two main components that determine water potential. The term water potential was introduced by Slater and Taylor. In old terminology, the equivalent word for water potential is diffusion pressure deficit, DPD, which was introduced by Maya. Water potential is a relative term, which refers to the chemical potential of pure water to that of chemical potential of a solution. Just as altitude on land is measured to sea level, 
So water potential in a system is measured to sea level. So water potential in a system is relative to that of a standard and pure water is taken as a standard. The water potential of pure water is taken as a standard. The water potential of pure water is arbitrarily set as zero. It is expressed in pressure units as pascals. PA. One megapascal equals to 10 bars. If a difference in water potential exists between two regions, water moves from the region of higher water potential to the region of lower water potential. Example, A and B systems. The water potential of system A is minus 2 bars and water potential of system B is minus 8 bars. The water moves from A psi W is minus 2 into system B psi W is minus 8 bars. The movement of water from A to B continues till the water potential of the two systems become equal. At this point of equilibrium, the net movement of water will cease. In some solute is dissolved in pure water. The solution has less free water and the concentration of water decreases, reducing its water potential. Hence, all solutions have a lower water potential than pure water. The magnitude of this lowering due to dissolution of a solute is called solute potential, psi w. Therefore, the water potential of a solution is always less than zero and negative. The more the solute molecules, the lower, more negative is the Psi S. For a solution at atmospheric pressure, Psi W equals to Psi S. If a pressure greater than atmospheric pressure is applied to pure water or a solution, its water potential increases. It is equivalent to pumping water from one place to another. Pressure can build up in a plant system when water enters a plant cell due to diffusion causing a pressure built up against the cell wall and it makes the cell turgid. This increases the pressure potential. Pressure potential is usually positive though in plants negative potential or tension in the water column in the xylem plays a major role in water transport up a stem. Pressure potential is denoted as psi p. Water potential of a cell is affected by both solute and pressure potential. The relationship between them is psi w equals to psi s plus psi p. Water potential is decreased by factors which reduce the relative water vapor that is, by addition of solutes, negative pressures or tensions, reduction in temperature and by metric forces. Water potential is increased by factors which increase the negative vapor pressure, mechanical pressure and increase of temperature. Leaves of mesophytes usually have a water potential of minus 10 bars while those of xerophytes have minus 15 bars. Osmosis Osmosis is a special type of diffusion. It refers to the movement of water from a solution of higher water potential to a solution of lower water potential across a differentially permeable membrane. The membrane allows all kinds of solvents and certain solutes through it. The membrane has different permeability properties 
for different substances. It permits free passage of water molecules but restricts the passage of dissolved solutes. All living membranes are differentially permeable. The artificial differentially permeable membranes are cellophane, parchment paper, etc. Plant cell wall is permeable membrane. It allows free passage of solvents and solutes. The plant cell is surrounded by a cell membrane and a cell wall. The cell wall is freely permeable to water and substances in solution. Hence, it is not a barrier to movement. In plants, the cells usually contain a large central vacuole, whose contents are vacuolar sap, contribute to the solute potential of the cell. In plant cells, the cell membrane, the membrane of the vacuole, the tonoplast together, is important determinants of movements of molecules in or out of the cell. Osmosis occurs spontaneously in response to driving force. The driving force for osmosis is the free energy difference between the two regions of water. This force is expressed as chemical potential gradient between two regions of water potential gradient. The net direction and rate of osmosis depends on both the pressure gradient and concentration gradient. Water will move from its region of higher chemical potential to its region of lower chemical potential until equilibrium is reached. At equilibrium, the two chambers have same water potential. Osmosis can be demonstrated by two popular experiments, Thistle Funnel Experiment and Potato Osmoscope. Thistle Funnel is a glass apparatus having a lower broad opening and an upper stem with a narrow opening. An egg membrane is fixed to the broad mouth of the thistle funnel, which acts as a selectively permeable membrane. The funnel is filled with sucrose solution up to a certain level in the tube. The inverted thistle funnel is immersed in a beaker containing water. After some time, the level of the solution in the tube of the funnel rises due to the movements of water into the thistle funnel through the selectively permeable membrane. According to thermodynamic principles, energy flows from higher to lower levels and therefore water movement takes place from the pure water in the beaker to a solution taken in the thistle funnel through selectively permeable membrane. The direction of water movement depends upon water potential gradient between the two systems. The larger the differences, the more the rate of flow between the two systems. The two systems may reach equilibrium after some time when the increased level of solution in the thistle funnel develops a pressure known as hydrostatic pressure. External pressure can be applied from the upper part of the funnel such that no water diffuses into the funnel through the membrane. This pressure required to present water from diffusing is in fact the osmotic pressure and this is the function of the solute concentration. More the solute concentration, greater will be the pressure required to present water from diffusing in. Numerically, the osmotic pressure is equivalent to the osmotic potential, but the sign is opposite. Osmotic pressure is the positive pressure applied, while osmotic potential is negative. Significance of Osmosis 1. Osmosis helps in absorption of water by plant. 2. 
movement of water from one cell to another is due to osmosis. 3. Opening and closing of stomata is brought about by osmosis. 4. Growth of young cells is brought about by somatic pressure and turgor pressure of these cells. 5. High osmotic concentrations increase the resistance of the plants to freezing temperature and desiccation. 6. Osmotic pressure of water is responsible for turgidity of plant cells, leaves, flowers and stem tips require turga for maintaining the form. 7. Osmotic pressure creates turga pressure in root xylem. This root pressure is responsible for rise of water to some height. 8. Certain turgor movements of the plants are determined by osmosis. Difference between osmosis and diffusion. Diffusion, osmosis. 1. The diffusion may occur if any medium and the diffusing particles may be solid, liquid or gas. 1. Osmosis occurs in liquid medium and only solvent molecules move from one place to another. 2. Presence of selectively permeable membrane is not required. Diffusion may occur through the membrane where the movement is possible. 2. Presence of selectively permeable membrane in between the two solutions is required. 3. Diffusion is the net downward movement of ions, or atoms or molecules along the free energy gradient from the place of its higher concentration to an area of its lower concentration. 3. Osmosis is a special type of diffusion of solvent molecules from low concentrated solution to a higher concentrated solution when the two are separated by a selectively permeable membrane. Plasmolysis Isotonic The concentration of external solution is equal to that of the cell. Hypotonic If the external solution is more dilute than the cytoplasm, it is Hypertonic. Hypertonic. If the external solution is more concentrated, it is hypertonic. The behavior of the plant cells in regard to water movement depends on the surrounding solution. In normal cell, the cell sap presses the protoplast against the cell wall. The cell is turgid due to the presence of water. When such a cell is placed in hypertonic solution, the water potential gradient favors the loss of water from the cell. This is due to the fact that the water potential of external solution is less than the water potential of the cell. And the loss of water from the cell is referred to as exosmosis. As water leaves the cell, the cell wall will be free from any tension. When more water is lost, the cell membrane pulls away from the cell wall. As a result of this, the protoplast resides from the cell wall and assumes a spherical mass in the center of the cell. The cell is in flaccid condition due to loss of water. The shrinkage of protoplast of cell due to loss of water is called plasmolysis. In a plasmolyzed cell, the space between the cell wall and protoplast is occupied by the hypertonic outer solution which has diffused in through the permeable cell wall.
the stage of plasmolysis at which the first sign of shrinkage of the cell contents from the cell wall becomes detectable is referred to as the stage of incipient plasmolysis. When a cell is placed in an isotonic solution, there is no net flow of water towards inside or outside. If a plasmolyzed cell is placed in pure water or in hypertonic solution, water diffuses into the cell causing the cytoplasm to build up pressure against the wall. This is called turgor pressure. This turgor pressure is ultimately responsible for enlargement and extension growth of cells. In hypertonic solution, it will quickly regain its water loss and turgor by endosmosis. The protoplasm as well as the cell as a whole attains their original shape and size respectively. This phenomenon is called deplasmolysis. The phenomena of plasmolysis and deplasmolysis are useful in the study of permeability of cell membrane to water and to dissolve solutes. If the rate of entry of water into a cell is to be measured, the cell is at first plasmolyzed and is then placed in water. The rate at which water is taken up can be determined by measuring the rate of increase in the volume of the cell contents. If a plasmolyzed cell remains in hypertonic solution, the plasmolyzing solute gradually enters the cell, causing an increase in osmotic concentration of the cell. This causes endosmosis, resulting in deplasmolysis. The rate of the spontaneous deplasmolysis is a measure of the permeability of the cell to the solute. Importance of the plasmolysis 1. The salting of pickles 2. Addition of sugar to jams and jellies Plasmolyzed bacterial and fungal spores which spoil foodstuffs help in preservation of foodstuffs. Imbibition The colloidal substances like clay particles, polypeptides, proteins, starch, etc. have hydrophilic surfaces. Water molecules are absorbed to these hydrophilic surfaces. This phenomenon of adsorption of water molecules